Hey, welcome everybody to Trend Talks Threat Research. I'm your host, John Clay, VP of Threat Intelligence here at Trend Micro, and this is episode 14. And just recently, Trend Micro published our mid-year security roundup report for 2024. And I wanted to go into some of the information that we shared about that. I'll link to the report uh, in the show notes so you have an access to that. Every year we publish a number of key reports. Uh, this is one of them, but we also do a full year report, usually in the spring of the year. Um, we also do a predictions report. So we'll be coming out with our 2025 predictions report probably in December. Uh, but for this report, I wanted to highlight a few things. One, um, we went didn't go in as far in depth as we usually do with these reports. Uh, we actually went a little bit higher level and focused on some of the threats that were targeting our customers mostly this year so that people could get an information and understanding of what we saw in the first half of 2024. And we're going to cover a couple of areas. Ransomware obviously is one, APT groups that we're seeing, adversary groups that we're seeing active in the criminal underground. And then AI is an obviously AI is big. Uh, and so we'll go into a little bit of those. Let's first go into ransomware. Ransomware is still causing issues for a lot of businesses out there. We saw a number of big ransomware attacks this year. Change Healthcare had one, uh, which caused a lot of disruptions in uh, for doctors prescribing meds and things like that happening because they got their infrastructure a little bit taken down there. And also CDK, which is an automotive organization. And one of the things that's interesting about this one is it was kind of a supply chain attack where they targeted CDK, who has, who has systems into all of the automotive uh, businesses around the country. And they were able to take a lot down a lot of those uh, um, independent businesses because they use their software. And so they use the software to get access. But in our data, um, we looked at a number of things. First was the industries that get targeted the most. Number one was banking, where the money is. So they target the, they targeted the banking industry, number one. Number two was technology. And number three was government. Probably the first likeliness is the first two, uh, banking and, and technology, they're more likely to pay. They've got the money to be able to pay the ransom to get their systems back online running. So um, that was probably one of the reasons. Government, uh, we know government gets targeted a lot. They tend to have a little bit less um, support of personnel and everything to help with their infrastructure and with their security operations. Uh, and the fact that when they can take down the infrastructure of government, that takes down access, uh, people's access to their systems. And so they are more likely to pay to get those systems back up and running uh, very quickly. So when you pay the ransom, you get the decryption keys, the decryption keys get applied, your systems are back up and running very quickly versus having to rebuild everything. A couple other things that happened in the first half, which was positive in the ransomware thing, was there was a number of uh, law enforcement operations that took down either infrastructure as well as arresting some of the individuals. The first one was LockBit. LockBit was taken offline as part of Operation Kronos. Um, this was the NCA led with a number of global law enforcement agencies helping out. Also third party uh, security vendors like Trend Micro. We actually looked at the uh, their third generation of ransomware malware that they were going to utilize. And we were able to access that, analyze it, and then put some safeguards in place and, and out it so that it couldn't be used anywhere in the world. The main goal of that operation was to make LockBit toxic for other for the affiliates to use, as well as any other cyber criminals out there. And it seems to be working. So far, LockBit has not been able to get back up and running as much as they thought. They also outed the main person who's out of Russia. Obviously, they haven't been able to arrest that person, but uh, certainly they have made it very toxic to, to work with that person. They also outed all the affiliates. So these affiliates are probably going to be going to a different ransomware group. In the second one, Operation Endgame saw global law enforcement agencies take down a number of ransomware-linked botnets. This was a joint endeavor that disrupted over 100 servers and seizure of over 2,000 malicious domains that were being used by this botnet. Uh, and so this was another good one as well. And then the third one was Operation Star Grew, which took down LabHost. LabHost was a major phishing as a service site 
um, that was uh, able to offer those services to other criminals out there in the world. Uh, resulted in 37 arrests. So that's always good news when you can actually get arrests and take these these criminals off the market, so to speak. And the online platform was taken down. So no one has access to that online platform anymore, as well as a lot of the, the uh, criminals involved with it were arrested. So our research also helped with that one, uh, with the lab host takedown. So, you know, Trend Micro continues to support global law enforcement in their investigations. We supply them uh, threat intelligence, global threat intelligence about the either the information about the malware or the the sites and the infrastructure and even sometimes the criminals themselves. So that was kind of the ransomware piece. Obviously, ransomware continues to be a problem. We'll continue to help uh, identify those and and support our customers around that. On the APT group, um, our research, we monitor many APT groups around the world. The first half saw a few groups uh, actively working. We saw groups like Sandworm, APT29, and Pondstorm, which is aka uh, APT28, target internet-facing routers in their attacks. In some of the cases, what was interesting is multiple groups were actually getting on to the same routers. Um, so these internet-facing routers tend to be a, a hotbed for malicious actors to get access to because obviously routers have access to internal networks and so forth. So that was one that was this all. We have an article that we'll, we can link to on that one. The Chinese-based groups like Earth Krehang and Earth Luska seem to be sharing similar backdoors um, and infrastructure. And we're seeing targeting the uh, governments of Taiwan. So obviously China targeting Taiwan, nothing new there, uh, but certainly maybe some escalation in this space because of what's going on in the world right now with those two. Uh, and then Earth Hunden utilized a backdoor called Water Bear, uh, which is known to be updated regularly with um, new features, functionality, obfuscation techniques so that you security vendors can't detect it. Um, recently, though, they started using one called Duder Bear, um, which was a backdoor, which is a shell code format uh, with anti-memory scanning capabilities. So again, these three groups, the different groups were um, targeting that. We'll continue to monitor these APT groups. In the report, we give you a lot more information about their TTPs and so forth. So you might want to take a look at that if you want more information about what these groups are doing um, and how they're doing it. And then AI, AI is all the rage right now, especially generative AI. Uh, everyone's looking to use it. Even the adversaries are looking to use it. We've published a number of blogs about it. Um, we even have a new blog series called Rogue AI, uh, which looks at that phenomenon about what we're going to be seeing with Rogue AI. We even have AI hub on the trendmicro.com website. It gives a lot of information. We published a number of blogs about AI um, in terms of the hype versus reality. So one of the things we're seeing is that adversaries aren't adopting AI as fast as everybody else in the world. One, because all the traditional stuff works very well. Um, but we're starting to see them adopt it. We're starting to see it. And so we have to prepare ourselves just like you're going to have to prepare your, your organization for adversaries use of AI um, besides using the security software. A couple of developments that we've seen jailbreaking as a service has seen growth. Adversaries don't look to be developing their own uh, large language models. And instead, they want to basically get around the existing security controls that are built into OpenAI, Grok. Uh, Gemini, Claude, all those different ones. So they want to use those and get around those security controls. So if I go chat GPT right now and I say, develop a, a malware for me, it won't do it because there are security controls in place that won't allow it to do it. What they're trying to do is jailbreak and get around those security controls. Another one is fraud, uh, AI enabled fraud, especially deep fake. So we recently came out with a deep fake detector uh, that detects a video, a deep fake video. Uh, but we've had published a number of things around deep fake. And, and deep fake is probably the one area that they're starting to utilize a little bit more, especially with business email compromise attacks. We might start seeing more and more use of, of generative AI and deep fake technology in those areas. Also, financial institutions know your customer verification process. We're starting to see them access that and try to get around that and utilize uh, deep fakes in that process. So they actually use a deep fake to get that, that information. So it gets verified by the, by the banking institution. And then definitely we're seeing more and more applications and services being offered in the underground markets. Um, so there are definitely services services and applications being offered there. And that will be quickly adopted by a lot of these um, 
uh, adversaries because it, it, they're working and it's starting to work a little bit more. So certainly, like I said, it's more hype than reality right now, but the reality is going to start coming in very quickly, I think, in this, in this space. So overall, the threat landscape was definitely dominated by ransomware, business email compromise, data exfiltrations. We saw a lot of data exfil happening as well uh, by adversaries located all over the world. And so the good news, Trend Micro, we have we have researchers that are looking all over the world. We have systems, we have threat intelligence coming from all over the world, all types of customers, whether it's large business, small business, consumers, we get all of that intelligence to help us better understand the, the attacks that are going to happen in the future there. So you can get more information about checking out that link that I'll put in the show notes. Um, but thanks for listening to episode 14 of Trend Talks Threat Research. I'll be back in a couple of weeks to look into another research project that Trend Micro has published. So to give you some kind of a cliff notes around it, but hopefully you enjoyed this session. Give me a like, comment about what you'd like to see in the future. I'd be uh, love to see that. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.